Good morning, my sister and brother Bertha. We're here trusting that you are doing well. Happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday. So how's the weather in your neighborhood? Uh, the sun is out right now. It's a little bit cool, but nevertheless, it's a beautiful day. So let us get started with our devotion. So let us pray first. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for waking us up, clothing us in our right mind, and giving us another opportunity, Father God, to surrender our lives to you. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Right now, Father God, I'm asking you to decrease me so that you will be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, scripture reading is coming from Psalm 69, verses 34 and 35 it says let the heavens and the earth praise him the seas the sea and everything that moveth therein and God will save Zion and will build the city of Judah that they may dwell there and have it in possession may the Lord add a blessing to the reading hearing and the doing of his word Father God, as we go into this topic, Father God, I ask you, Father God, to open our hearts, and Father God, to receive the information, but not only receive the information, Father God, but doers of your word. Thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And the state here. The same creative energy that brought the world into existence is still exerted in upholding the universe and continuing the operation of nature. The hand of God guides the planet in their orderly march through the heavens. It is not because of inherent power that, that year by year the earth continue its motion around the sun and produce its bounties. The word of God controls the, in the elements. The word of God controls the elements. He covers the heaven with clouds and prepare, and prepare rain for the earth. He makes the valley fruitful and grass to grow upon the mountain. It is through his power that vegetation flourish, that the leaves appear and the flowers blossom. The whole natural world is designed. The whole, and this lost my face. The whole natural world is designed to be an interpreter of the things of God. To Adam and Eve in their Eden home, nature was full of the knowledge of God, teeming with divine instructions. It was vocal with the voice of wisdom to their attentive ear. Wisdom spoke to the ear. No, let me go back. Wisdom spoke to the eyes and was received into the heart, for they commune with God in his created works. As soon as the holy pair transgressed the law of the Most High, the brightness from the face of God departed from the face of nature. Nature is now marred with defiled and defiled by sin. Nature is now marred maybe is ruined and defiled by sin. But God's object, object, but God object lesson is not wiped out even now. Rightly study and interpreted, nature speaks of the Creator. A divine truth is revealed in holy wit, so it is reflected as from a mirror in the face of nature. And through its creation, we become acquainted with the Creator. And so the book of nature becomes a great lesson book, which instructors who are wise can use in connection with the scripture to guide the lost sheep back to the fold of God. And the work of God are studies. As the work of God are studies, the Holy Spirit flashed conviction into the mind. It is not the conviction which logical reasoning produce, but unless the mind has become too dark to know God, the eyes too dim to see him, the ear too dull to hear his voice, a deeper meaning is grasped, and the sublime 
spiritual truth of the written word is impressed on the heart. The more effective way to teach the heathen who know not God is through his work. Let me repeat that. The most effective way to teach the heathen who knows not God is through his work. In this way, far more readily than by any other method, they can be made to realize the difference between their idols, the work of their own hands, and the true God, the maker of heaven and earth. So that concludes my devotion, my sister, my brother. The natural world speak of the creator. The natural world speak of the creator. And we are looking or reading to be like Jesus. And it's a devotional by Ellen G. White. So that concludes, my sister, my brother, our devotion. Isn't this beautiful? The most effective way to teach the heathen who know not God is through his work. So take them in nature, my sister, and brother. Take them through nature, and nature reveal the creator. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message. I thank you for my sister, my brother, that stopped by here today, Father God. Continue to bless each and every one of us, Father God. There's so many things going on in this world, Father God. There's someone right now that's sick in the hospital. We ask you, Father God, to send your healing spirit there right now. Someone is about to give up, Father God. We ask you to send someone, your angels, right there to encourage them, Father God. Continue to be with each one of us, Father God, and we surrender our lives to you, Father God. Take us, Father God, mold and shape us. And Father God, if we have said anything today or done anything today that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you that you'll forgive us. Wash us, Father God, and make us whiter than snow. And once you've done that, Father God, we give you permission to use us to continue to serve you, Father God. Give us the power that we need right now to run from sin. And we'll forever give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. And we thank you, Father God, so much for hearing. We thank you for answering to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so this is Birdo Warrior. You can find me at BirdoWarrior.com. Follow me over YouTube. There's a wealth of information there for you on YouTube. Um, I believe, no, not believe. I'm, I'm not sure which one of the books, because I've done so many books. But there's one uh, book talks about that when someone is uh, about to give up, their angels fly back to heaven and, may, and give a report. And the whole heaven is very silent. They're sad because someone is about to give up. So what God, what um, God Father does, he sent another angels to support that angel to encourage that person my sister and brother and god is using us as his angels because we are the hands and the feet of god that once you ask people because someone is dressed up and they wear they drive a fancy car that doesn't mean that they're not going through stuff my sister and brother we all are going through stuff so just continue to encourage one another and it's amazing i need to find that part again and maybe i should post it on my or maybe I, I bring it tomorrow and, tell, and, and read it to you. Because it's very encouraging to know that in order for us to go into repentance, it's Jesus that brings us to repentance, my sister and brother. Okay? He brings us to, he, he brings up our mind to repent. I should bring that part as well. So that was one thing I need to probably need to bring or need to refresh your mind off of different videos that I have done already. And but the angels that goes back to heaven when someone is about to give up. It's a sad, sad, sad day in heaven when one of God's children is about to give up my sister and brother. So let us continue to pray and fast for one another. So I'll go into my um, back in my studies and see if I could find that um, that those passage and so then I could be, be able to share it tomorrow. Let me check and see, or maybe, hold on, hold on, let me see what's going on tomorrow. I already lost my page. Hold on, let me see. Let me see the lesson for tomorrow. So, let's see the lesson. Okay, so let me see, I might do it, I might come back here and do a video. 
Um, but don't hold me to that because I got my hands full with my grandkids right now. So let me see if I can find that for you. So I either do it either later today, come back and do that particular one, or I might post it on my Facebook wall. One of the two, one of the three. Okay. So with that, my sister and brother, I love you. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to richly bless you and your family. But before you go, let us do the four hugs for survival. Uh, my grandbaby, she fell asleep. So let us go to do the four hugs. So here we go. One, two, three, four. I love you, my my sister, my brother. Love you until tomorrow or maybe later today, I should say. Be blessed and take care.